know, I ride a motorbike, and I've, I don't know if you ride a motorbike here, but sometimes you have to, uh, if you get pulled over, to get a breath test or even to talk to these police, you have to take your helmet off. Right? And I kind of, uh, or I never did it, and I'd kind of love to just take the helmet off and then do that face thing. Just give them that. <laughs> <laughs> They're just sort of chewing air, you know, like a, like a newborn baby, just sort of witnessing the world for the first time. So anyway, like any good comedian, um, <laughs> like any good comedian, I've prepared some material about junkies, <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't even have a problem with junkies. You know, they're easy to make fun of, but I. I'm not interested. I'd go further than that. I, I, there's something I admire about junkies. Something I'm perhaps even jealous of. You don't hear that too often, right? But I am jealous of this ability that all junkies possess this. And it's this ability to almost, but not quite. But almost, but not quite. But almost, but not quite. <laughs> Drop things. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know? On the street, whether it be their you know, shopping bag full of three quarter pants they've just stolen. <laughs> <laughs> or their newborn kid. You know, if, a, if a junkie were doing stand up comedy, as if, um, <laughs> he or she would do it like this. You know, I don't know if it would be a very good gig. <laughs> but I haven't seen them perform, so I shouldn't cast judgement. <laughs> I saw this junkie once yell at a tram driver. You know those old trams? The, the really early ones that rattle. There's some, there's some models that the tram driver can just simply step off the side. Have you seen those? You get them over in sort of uh, Chapel Street. Anyway, I saw this, this junkie. I have no idea what the altercation was about, but he was yelling back at this this tram driver, he's like, oh, you poofed a cunt! And that's one thing that struck me, was the term poofed a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept yelling that phrase, and the tram driver was handling it very well. I don't know what it was about, but he was just looking down and going, just get out of here, man. Just come on, just get out of here. And then the guy, the junkie, yells, you poofed a cunt! You've never done a day's jail! <laughs> Drawing on that old, you know, that old, uh, you've never done a hard day's work. Which, you know, my father is a really hard worker, and I'm not physically a hard worker. If my dad were to say to me, David, you've never done a hard day's work in your life, I would probably, even if I was just pretending, to go, ah, oh, you know, that would hurt. And he was obviously trying to get that from this trip. So he goes to go, you've never done a. No, oh, she's at work right now. Um, <laughs> I've never done a day's joke. <laughs> and then I walked out, that was, that was in Chapel Street, and I saw that sign, I left that situation, I saw that sign, that billboard. And everyone knows this billboard. And I read it, and I just thought, there must be something soft that comes out of the Bronx. <laughs> yeah, there must be. Like, you know, boxing is not a soft sport. But, you know, the gloves are. <laughs> so you know how brilliant is life, everyone? I don't have much time up here. You, you're applauding life? Yeah, so you should. Because life, I, I, I only can, I want to talk about life because I just, my mum, it's my mother's birthday today. Um, but she, she, this is not a joke, she died on the 11th of July, just gone. So it's a particularly weird gig for her birthday. But you know, if you can go through something hard like that, like, have your a parent or a friend or a sibling die, if you can come out the other side and I'm still going through it, you know, you can get good things out of it. Like I just thought to myself, oh, I thought, how brilliant can life be, you know? Because you don't ask to be here, do you? You're just born. You have no say in it. Yeah, you, you have no say in it. And everyone around you will die. And you'll die. <laughs> Possibly in pain. And you didn't ask for any of it! <laughs> how good is that? <laughs> I went to the, uh, um, so I went to my mother's funeral, obviously, and um, people don't know how to react with 
there, like this woman, a friend's mother, came up to me. We just buried my mum. Uh, you know, like five minutes later, there's hundreds of people in this cemetery. And I'm sort of in those first stages of grief. This woman comes up to me, she's like, hey, you know, I, I hope you're you know, holding up all right. Do you want to come to my 50th birthday party on that Louis? What? Did you just see what we were doing? We just never you know, we were sort of the dirt. You know, like, what the fuck? She might as well just come up to me and said, <laughs> I, have, I have to leave. But, um, yeah, a lot of strange things have been going through my head, like, because of it. And I, I was in the supermarket the other day, and I uh, was waiting in line to, to pay for stuff and leave. And I sort of glared over to a, the end of an aisle, had um, some tin tins, you know, big display, a row of tin tins. And I'm just sort of glaring. And I'm looking at these tin tins thinking, that's something we all have, isn't it? Tim Dan. <laughs> Everyone can relate to that on some level. Mm. I'm sort of thinking, what the hell are they about? What are they doing here? Yeah, Tim Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and then my mind wanders off to my recently dead mother. I'm looking at these Tim Tams. I'm thinking about, and I'm simultaneously sort of coming up with these two things. I think they can't exist. These two, is, is there an echo on the mic or something now? This bit's already fucked up enough as it is. Um, <laughs> And I'm, I'm just I'm thinking, what is that about? Like, everyone likes Tim Tams. I assume. No one knows about my mother's death. Like, a lot of people in the world didn't even know my mother was alive, didn't know her name. Like, my mother's death doesn't affect you man, as, as it affected me, does it? You, know, you don't care as much. And that's, that, but if I talk about Tim Tams, you sort of go, yeah, sure. <laughs> so what I'm saying is we can't really relate to each other, can't we, people? We can't really sort of, you get close at times, but you can't. And everyone's mother is going to die at some point. If, that, if your mother hasn't died already, it's, she's going to die. And I think what we need is everyone's mother to just die at once. <laughs> you know, so we, we can finally understand how each other feels. Even for a short period of time, we would know, we would have sympathy for each other. You know? That'd be great. Every supermarket would be empty that day. No one would be going to Tim Tams. Every store manager, every staff member, every customer. It'd all be home because everyone's mother just died. That'd be fucking great. <laughs> I don't want that to happen, but I just want people to get along. <laughs> hey, um... How you doing? I'm not doing so good. My mother just died. Mine, mine too, I know how you feel. Let's make love. But we're both men. It doesn't matter, we're grieving. <laughs>